dust is prevalent in all aspects of mining operations at all mine tops. A mine worker can certainly have their quality of life affected by dust inhalation. The effects may not be immediately apparent. It may happen 10, 15, 20 years after people first started to inhale the dust. We have actually had a recurrence of dust diseases being reported to us in the mining industry in the last three years. There are a lot of different dust-related lung diseases. These include things like coal workers' pneumoconiosis or black lung and silicosis. And both of these diseases are ones where the inside of the lung is scarred by the long-term inhalation of dust. And there's a myth which says that you can't get coal workers' pneumoconiosis unless you've worked underground. This is entirely untrue. When dust is inhaled into the lungs, the majority of this is actually caught by the lungs' natural defence mechanisms. But small particles of dust, particularly the ones that you can't see, can go really far down into the bottom of the lungs and get fibrosis produced. Fibrosis is scar tissue laid down within the lungs and the lungs eventually shrink and you get more and more breathless. And once you've actually developed this, there's nothing that you can do to change it. You can have treatment which helps a little bit in terms of the symptoms, but essentially it's fatal. The good news is that these diseases are entirely preventable. If you take the right steps, you can live a long life and be there for your family in your retirement. We want all workers and supervisors in mining workplaces to fully understand the health risks associated with dust and the controls that are required to ensure that those health risks are managed. With regard to effective dust control measures, first and foremost, understand the nature of the hazard. Understand where your risk areas are with regard to potentially dangerous um, accumulations of airborne dust. Two, identify appropriate risk controls using the hierarchy of controls. Three, implement those controls. Four, review the effectiveness of those controls on an ongoing basis. And fifth and last, actually can make that an ongoing loop of, uh, of activity that should become a matter of routine that every day, any worker, any supervisor, any manager are constantly scanning their, their risk controls and taking action if they think they're not working properly. Workers should ask questions. Is there a personal airborne dust monitoring program and how often is it undertaken? What controls are being used to prevent or minimise dust or protect against breathing airborne dust? Is there a health monitoring program and what medical practitioner is used? If workers are concerned about dust control at their workplace, they should speak to their supervisor or operations manager about dust controls. Remember also that personal protective equipment is really the last line. It is not the thing that will actually save you from getting dust disease or otherwise the main thing is actually preventing dust inhalation. The other thing that you can do is make sure that you're part of a surveillance program and having regular chest x-rays and examinations. It's really important because this is something which could actually stop you from developing a long-term chronic disease and keep you alive in your retirement dust, particles can be very, very small and you won't necessarily see them. They can be a thousand times smaller than a grain of sand. So remember, just because you can't see the dust, it doesn't mean that it's not doing you harm.